Coming hot off the heels of Chanel's third place victory in Turin last year, expectation was high going into this year's Benidorm Fest about who would succeed Miss Torero. Two of the early favourites that emerged before the national final were Tenerife pop star Agony and returning from last year Blanca Paloma. It is fair to say that there is a renewed vigour around Spain following their triumph in Turin. RTVE are actively trying to carry home the trophy and bring the contest to Spain after 54 long years without a win. I have spoken before about how Spain seem to favour songs that they like and the challenge with this is they tend to be less accessible to a trans-European audience. I have said across many videos and I still stand by this that EA EA is a true work of art. A timeless high concept meditation that takes the form of a lullaby from grandmother to granddaughter. Spain's confident and highly professional staging was largely transported brick by brick to the Eurovision stage in Liverpool. This is very similar to Sweden and shows a self-assurance and a confidence about the package that they were putting forward. Oftentimes, countries try to hurriedly redo their staging to fit with the stage that they find themselves on in a foreign land. This last minute scramble can sometimes have disastrous results. A solid staging concept provides a country and artist with a solid foundation on which to build on and allows them to focus on their focal performance as opposed to how to adapt the performance to a new staging concept. Blanca Paloma won both the public vote and the jury vote so had full backing from the Spanish public and professionals to go and deliver for the nation. Ea Ea is an interesting high concept piece that is rooted in Spanish tradition. Blanca herself describes the track as a celebration of female ancestors, power and strength. Going into the competition, Blanca was being widely predicted to do well. The bookies had her in the top 10 in the run up to the contest and out of the big five nations with the one being predicted to do the best. Many fan polls had picked this to finish in the top three. Blanca's vocal is powerful and faultless. I saw the song performed live many times and Blanca never failed to deliver. The Eurovision artists are constantly performing these songs at pre-parties and other events in the run up to the competition and it is of course expected that they will have off days or indeed times when they are not able to perform at their very best. Not with Blanca. This song was consistently performed well to great applause. In Amsterdam she took a risk mixing up the arrangement. This showcased her confidence and belief in her ability to deliver the song that she was willing to mess with the formula to see what the results would be. Blanca wasn't an underdog and didn't go on any kind of hero's journey. She was a skilled performer that went out night after night delivering a knockout performance. Blanca in a way became someone that we couldn't really root for as it felt like she was already there in terms of performance. Other acts like Portugal and Malta gave us something that we wanted to get behind and fight for. This was also another year of strong female personalities. Lazara, Alessandra, Mae Muller, Taya and Selena, Noah Carell, Mimi Katz, Loreen and of course the other Blanca from Poland. It felt as though Blanca Ploma may have got lost among this roster of female stars. Turning to the song, and I had always said from the beginning that this is a very niche song and performance. At the time of Benidorm Fest, I felt that what Agony was putting forward might have been more accessible to a wider European audience. It could be argued that Lorene had a similar trajectory, a well-performed, expertly staged production that was Eurovision ready. However, Lorene is very well known not just in Eurovision circles, and there was the whole will she, won't she win for a second time drama surrounding her. Even the question of how she was going to get the two ton sandwich maker to Liverpool generated significant column inches. Blanca had a stage ready performance with a powerful vocal but the question was always going to be not how this would translate to the Eurovision stage but how will it translate to a Eurovision audience. Chanel's song last year has plenty of English language hooks to bring in a wider audience. Chanel also went into the competition as an underdog in two ways. 
The first being she hadn't won the public vote in her own nation, which left her with the unenviable position of having to continually justify why she was there and prove herself to the Spanish people. The second was that Spain are a serial underdog at Eurovision. A string of poor results meant that even a 15th place finish in the final would have been seen as a victory. Slow-mo was fast-paced and highly addictive and when it came to final day in Turin in 2022 it was so slick and so polished with an avalanche of momentum it was destined for a top 5 spot. Unfortunately for Blanca she was expected to follow this with something equally successful. The United Kingdom was in a similar position, landing in one of the top spots means that to be seen as a success you either need to equal the position or outright win which gives the artist a mountain to climb right out of the gate. Ea Ea is a powerful piece that is culturally rich and diverse and showcases the very best of the Spanish flamenco style. Music like this must have a place in the Eurovision world I think and the key question is how can this be made accessible for a wider audience. Blanca herself vocally didn't put one foot wrong I just question if the song itself was too high concept and lyrically diverse to be understood by a wider audience. The Saturday night viewing audience will be seeing the songs for the first time and it's highly unlikely they will be googling the lyrics to try and understand the sentiment and meaning behind the song. They will take everything on face value. Chanel's booty hypnotic doesn't require a degree in musicology to understand. Blanca's Ea Ea is littered with subtext that is highly likely to be lost on the casual viewer, which I think is a shame. I of course applaud Spain for leaning fully into culturally rich Spanish music tradition. So, do I think Blanca was robbed? I'm going to say on this occasion, no. I don't believe that she was. While I believe that countries and artists should be bringing forward music that is true and authentic, it needs to have a degree of accessibility to resonate with 160 million people and stand out. Like it or not, the tally vote is an important part of how the votes are calculated and countries must be keenly aware of this. Just 5 points from the tally vote significantly hampered Blanca's chances at doing well. I still believe that Agony was Spain's shot at continuing their positive results arc within the competition. I think that Spain is certainly on the right track with the Benidorm Fest process and they are certainly doing everything that they can to secure that ever elusive win. I think it could be an idea for Spain to look at bringing in a pan-European jury similar to Melfast and UMK. I understand that William Lee Adams and Katrina Leskinich were added to the jury to help gain a more international perspective but a more pan-European influence could help. That way they could ensure they were selecting something that was resonating with non-Spanish speaking audiences across Europe. It will be interesting to see what Spain put forward next year and I for one cannot wait to see it. What are your thoughts? Do you think Spain were robbed this year or do you feel 17th place was about right? Please let me know in the comments below. I look forward as always to reading those but until next time take care and I'll see you soon.